The Minolta Capios 25 is a 35mm compact point and shoot film camera which I haven't seen anyone talk about. This camera made me fall in love with film photography all over again. I would say it is perfect for the person who wants to make casual photography look less casual or the person with literally no experience, doesn't know where to start and has no idea which camera to buy out of this incredibly saturated film camera market or the amateur with tiny hands and no brain energy to adjust everything manually. I also can't see why a professional film photographer wouldn't have fun with this camera either. So before getting this, I knew I wanted a simple affordable film camera um, that I could use to enhance um, my casual photography but also good quality enough to use for um, portfolio building photo shoot projects. I'm still an amateur but I know that when I do become a professional photographer I will still be using this camera. The standout feature in this camera that makes it so special to me is its panorama mode. It sort of adds a cinematic effect to the photos. I just love how it makes moments in my life look like a shot from a movie. I, I know shooting panorama though probably like isn't everyone's preference but I am so obsessed with this feature and I can't live without it anymore. I'm not familiar with the technical terminology but the camera has a flash, a 28 to 70 millimeter zoom which comes in really handy. There's also an option to show the date in the corner of your photos. Um, I, when I first got the camera, I was never really bothered to turn that thing off or change the date. Um, but eventually I did it and I do prefer my photos without that. So something else that I love about this camera is that um, the lens are hidden inside the camera and it only like pops out when you turn the camera on, which makes me feel like it's, you know, really well protected. In my previous experiences, I found it really annoying to um, have the cap for the camera lens and for it to keep falling off. I felt like I always had to be super cautious because the cameras felt so delicate. I also want something that I can carry literally everywhere, like um, even in nightclubs where I'm jumping up and down. And I didn't feel safe like bringing the previous cameras I've had out, you know, like everywhere because they were just really so delicate but this is like, even the surface material, it's like plasticky so the pl it, it feels like a Nokia kind of, like it feels unbreakable obviously like I'm still careful with it but I just feel much more secure and it saves space so it's amazing I'm also aware that the term budget and affordable is subjective. I got this camera for around 80 euros secondhand um, in Hong Kong and that was pretty expensive for me but it was 100% worth it. I was looking online the other day and I'm pretty sure you can actually buy this camera for a cheaper price on Etsy or something but I was looking um, on the Hong Kong based secondhand online store um, and most of the secondhand camera stores on that market um, that were like this, like point and shoot, um, 35 millimeters, most of them were around the 80 euros price range. I did hours and hours of research online trying to find like the perfect, the best film camera um, that would be suitable for my preferences. Most of the best film cameras range from like a thousand to two thousand US dollars which obviously, like, for a beginner, no. <laughs> so they are more for professional use. But either way, there are like hundreds of thousands of cameras that are built like this one with like the similar price, like point and shoot, you know? And I'm super indecisive, so I didn't know what to do. So despite all the research that I did, I actually bought this camera from seeing a small influencer online post these really beautiful pictures that she took with the film camera. It was literally love at first sight. I felt a connection with the quality and effect of those pictures. I asked her what camera she used and it was quite hard to find at first. I was looking in the Hong Kong 
um, based secondhand stores and no one was selling it but eventually she showed up on my feed and um, we manifested each other. I got this camera out of dissatisfaction with my previous ones so I previously tried the Olympus Pen EE3 and the Ricoh GR3. The Olympus Pen was my first non-disposable film camera which honestly what definitely wasn't the best camera in my opinion for like an absolute beginner that only had experience with disposables. It was small but it was also heavy. It didn't have flash which I only realized after I bought it like because I ordered it online which is really silly. It was also like almost double the price that I got for this camera which honestly I felt a little bit scammed from the seller because it's all it was also second hand and it had some problems but anyways I sold it the one cool thing about the Olympus was that it was double exposure so I got 72 photos out of a regular 36 exposure film roll however the camera quality was a little too grainy for me as well uh, though I did get some nice pictures out of that one um, it wasn't meant for me. The Ricoh GR3, on the other hand, um, was lent to me. I think the most expensive one out of all three that I've mentioned. That camera produced really good quality pictures, but it felt more like a scenic photography camera. Like, it had a wide angle mode, which is also very different from the panorama mode on the Minolta. I think it was also just the fact that I didn't actually own that camera that made me feel like disconnected from it. It felt less personal and I feel like with cameras it's so important to feel a connection to it. And I just didn't feel a deep connection with the other two cameras that I just mentioned. At the end of the day, while I absolutely love this camera and I would recommend it to literally everyone, it probably isn't for everyone because of personal preferences. If you're an absolute beginner and you have no idea where to start, you have to start somewhere to learn what your preferences are. If you were like me, like super scared that I would be wasting my money and um, you know, I need to find the perfect camera. I mean, I got lucky I found this camera and I'm in love with it. But while I didn't love the cameras that I used before this one, I learned more about what I wanted and didn't want in a camera. But don't be worried that um, you'll make the wrong decision. Just make a decision and obviously like this would be a great decision. I hope this video helped at least one person out there with similar preferences as me in the same position I was in last year. But yeah, start somewhere. And um, I also just wanted to express my love and appreciation for this camera for making me love film photography even more and discovering more about myself. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching and um, like and subscribe if you want to see more creative content like this. I want to post content on a, like a little bit of everything that I just enjoy doing. I will see you guys hopefully in the next video. Bye!